<laughs> nope, nope, nope. Shut it down. Shut it all down. This has all got to go. Um, you probably know what happened, right? A, a couple of weeks ago, Red Rahoy made a really long, like, hour and a half longer video about the entire Monkey Island series. It's a popular video. It's a well-made video. It's a video that I would one day hope to have the skill and time and patience to make. It's a great video. You should go watch that one instead of this. <sighs> now, let's fix it. Everything I do here is going to be derivative. At this point, it's completely derivative. You know everything there is to know about Monkey Island. It's a much more popular video, much better made than anything that I can do. <sighs> the sad thing is, I've been planning to do this like since January. I had initially Monkey Island May, but that turned into Mech May, but then that turned into May with some mechs in it and other games, and I moved uh, Monkey Island to June because you know it's June. Who's gonna make Monkey Island videos in June? It's it's not the release date of Monkey Island. Nobody's celebrating. Two weeks ago, there is Red Ahoy with a superb video, a fantastic video about the game. I was gonna go all out on this video. I mean, all out. I mean, I had my pirate eye patch, had my pirate hat. I was gonna talk like a yar har, like a yonder pirate, and this entire video, yar har, swash the poop deck, shiver me timbers, walk the poop plank, something about planks, yar har, you know, all that stuff. Probably gonna get myself throat cancer or something by talking like that. But now it's uh, pointless. I mean, there is a better video out there. Go watch that one. It's. What's the use? This show is completely derivative. It's pointless. So, guess that's it. No more Monkey Island May. I mean, June. Should have made it May. <laughs> if I had made it May, I at least could have gotten you know, a bit of attention onto myself, and then you could have saw that video and forgotten that I make shows too. It happens. That's the internet. So. Take care. Unless you really want to watch the video. Because I still made it, like... I plan things in advance and I make them. It's just, you know... That other video is somewhat better. So, uh... If you still want to watch it, it's... It's right here. So, um... Your call. Just saying. There's a better video out there. Bye. Well, not bye, because I'm in the video. So, see you in after I... What can I say more about Monkey Island that everybody else in the world hasn't already said, especially recently in a quite long video that covered the entire series? The secret of Monkey Island is a legendary game, but not because it sold bajillions and gajillions of copies like the... Well, the games that sell millions of copies routinely in the last couple of years that nobody really plays or remembers all that well or had any sort of influence on anybody or anything. But it is legendary in the sense that anybody that's ever played it knows it, even now, remembers it quite fondly because it latches onto you, it digs in deep, because it has several qualities that make it absolutely shine as an adventure game and positively glow as a game in general as a piece of art. And make no mistake, if anybody ever tells you that games aren't art, for one, they're wrong, they are. As wrong as a person that's wrong can ever be wrong. But if they want an example, then just show them Monkey Island, any of them, honestly, the first one preferably. And if they still can't get it through their heads, remind them what kind of art Hollywood is producing, because, you know, all those movies are art as well, all of them. And if they still haven't reconsidered, they're a replicant informed the authorities. Monkey Island was made in the golden olden age of 1990. Remember that year? The first year of freedom. No more communism. People here in my neck of the woods would not be able to enjoy Monkey Island until much, much later. We were a bit busy with uh, everything falling apart and everything being stolen, like it still is today. The secret of Monkey Island was the brainchild of a man named Ron Gilbert. He wanted to make a game about pirates in the Caribbean, but he couldn't
couldn't do it alone, now could he? So he got a couple of his friends together, all of them working at LucasArts back then, or LucasFilm Games. They were Tim Schafer and Dave Grossman, and together, along with a, a couple of musicians and artists to draw things, they created a masterpiece. And it's a game that was made in a way that games usually are not made. A lot of the dialogue in the game was made up on the spot as it was being entered into the game. It's the improvisational work of a bunch of people that really knew what they were doing, that really had a common vision for a game, and had the talent to pull it off. Sort of like the original Ghostbusters movie was. It's very important that these people made it, because you can see their talent in there. Without them, or all of them, or at least some of them, you really wouldn't get the same effect, now would you? It would be like somebody making a new Ghostbusters movie with a lot of improvisation in it and no clue what to actually do with it. You'd get the 2016 Ghostbusters or Paradox's Empire, which I believe had some improvised dialogue in it, otherwise I can't explain why it was so awful and unfunny. But Monkey Island was a blast. As a comedy, it is phenomenal. And mind you, comedies are hard. To make something that will constantly keep people laughing, that's not easy. Drama's easy. Making a tearjerker is goddamn easy. I could tell you what I did in 2015 and you'd be crying right now. But to make you laugh, that takes effort. That takes skill. And he had that in Monkey Island. But there was more to it than just that. The version we're seeing on the background is the final of the old versions. It's the complete, I think, VGA version of the game. There were some previous ones with uh, low resolutions, with uglier sprites, but this is the one that most people remember. It's the one they could play for almost 20 years, until the remake came that added its own graphic style. It also added voices to the characters, which were not present in the original game, since this was before the time when Lucas could actually do that. I mean LucasArts. George Lucas is in the game as well, he shows up as an easter egg, or as a red herring if you will. And it's important important that a game looks like this. It's not really all that beautiful in terms of detail, in terms of general aesthetics. It is a simplistic game in terms of graphics, but there's something endearing to it, there's something charming to it, as simplistic as it looked. Now mind you, the second one looks way better and it's a lot more atmospheric, but you can't really say that it looks bad, especially when you get to see close-ups of the characters, which in this version are represented by actual artwork from the development of the game, not just well, really crude sprites as uh, you would have seen in the first version. And what's more important is that it sounds right. It sounds right thanks to Michael Land's beautiful Monkey Island medley and to all the music that's in there made by other people like Patrick Mundy as well. The game just feels right in the way it looks, in the way it sounds and in the way it plays. This was still in the age where we had the uh, big selection of verbs to use on the environment. It was before we got the hand of more contextual type of controls, but this also meant that you could use those verbs on things you weren't supposed to and get hilarious effects, funny descriptions. And what's more important than this is that Monkey Island didn't really behave like a normal adventure game. Now, the genre at this point was, in terms of graphical adventure games, was around seven years old. It was under a decade old, which to us now may not seem like a lot, but it kind of is. It's enough for a general idea of what the genre is to be formed in everybody's subconscious. It's like we're going through now with the battle royale genre. We all know what it is. Half of us hate it, or at least a constant shoving of it in our faces at every turn and inserting it in every game. And we kind of want to see if they're gonna make them. We want to see something that's a bit different. When Monkey Island was, then it's way different. It is in a class that is actually quite rare and not really all that populated, that of a parody of a satire game that is still absolutely part of the genre it's trying to parody, and it is a phenomenal game within that genre, even if you don't understand that it is a parody, that it is meant in part as satire. I think one of the closest games we've gotten to this level of 
understanding of a genre would be Spec Ops the Line with the well the problem that Spec Ops the Line is kind of boring to play honestly and that's part of the idea of it that was part of the point of the game but the message sort of outweighed the actual enjoyment of playing it in Monkey Island since it doesn't deal with a subject that uh, white phosphorus killing everybody delicate there's a lot more room for enjoyment for fun for a game that is good on its own and a parody of the genre it's part of now why would i say it's a parody well remember when this was made uh, the biggest games in the genre back then were the king's quest series were the, the sierra online games the police quest even leisure shoot larry in a way those were the big ones yes lucas had made a bunch of video games in that genre up until then they had made the um, well, Maniac Mansion which was the reason why the technology for Monkey Island exists they had made Zack McCracken and I think Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and these games or at least the few of them that I played and still remember did still conform to the Sierra Online recipe where you could die you could get lost you could pretty much screw yourself over and not really know why Monkey Island was built from its score with the idea of rejecting all that with the idea of making a, an adventure game that wasn't about racking your brain trying to figure out the complete absurdist moon logic that the developer expected from you not to say that the game was not crazy monkey island was super crazy the entire series is that's the point of it but the craziness has a logic to it do you want to use a cannon to be shot out of okay you're gonna need a helmet can't find a helmet get a pot become fed a pot on your head right it makes sense in a sort of well not, not even twisted but imaginative way there's a rope that's connecting to violence well here's a chicken with a pulley in the middle it's stupid it's ridiculous but it's not hard to make the connection and the game will constantly make jokes about these kinds of instances. one of the best ones possible being a completely non-interactive fight scene where your character just starts grabbing items off screen and using them off screen in totally dumb ridiculous ways well dumb if you haven't played the king's quest series they yeah uh, there there's some puzzles in there that are just kind of they make the one with Fester Shine Top's fight from behind the uh, the wall seem logical. The Secret of Monkey Island was also a game where you could not lose. You had no fail state other than the one that you would create for yourself if you could not get past a puzzle, which is still a fail state if you're wondering uh, if you try to find a game via fail states, that counts as one. Because the game issued a challenge and you failed it, whereas not wanting to press a double W key that doesn't mean you failed just that you refuse to acknowledge that the arrest is a game which i wholeheartedly appreciate no matter what's anything you could do in the game like fall off a cliff shoot yourself out of a cannon guybrush throughput would always emerge unscathed whole this allowed you to do a lot of exploration they allowed you to enjoy this world without any sort of nagging feeling that oh if i take this step i'm gonna die and i'm gonna have to save and reload a save none of that it's just pure enjoyment pure fun no stress just the experimentation of trying to learn the secrets of this topsy-turvy caribbean fantasy world with ghosts and pirates and the occasional three-headed monkey there were also a lot of references in the game but monkey island did references differently than you would see in a lot of modern media where it's just hey there's that thing you know from somewhere else it, it, it was a bit more subtle like the way it inserted george lucas into the game or the way it inserted loom into the game as a pirate in a bar talking about loom the game could do that because in the way it was aware it was a game yeah no that's another thing that's quite uh, popular these days where the game knows it's a game and it tries to make you think that it's a game and sort of plays with that idea monkey island did that too we would constantly see well evidence that this was a game certain names especially monkey island had a tm next to them characters would sometimes break roll just to exposit something or to tell you to just go with it because it's a game it did it in a way that felt natural that fit because it doesn't have the setup of a world that's serious that takes itself serious at all instead it's a light-hearted adventure that has 
really loose laws about what actually is happening in it, what is allowed to happen, to what degree everything is real, where you play as an idiot that wants to be a pirate. Well, maybe I'm being a bit too harsh. Guybrush isn't really at the same level of idiot as Roger Wilco, Th though they are a bit similar. You have to admit, they are quite similar, and Roger Wilco is a lot older than, uh, than Guybrush in terms of when the games were released. And you also probably know the, the legend that he gets his name from Guy.Brush. There's two mechs in Double Rasa, one called Dude, another one called Brush. I sort of thought this was a reference to him, I'm not sure. And to accomplish your feat, you will have to do all sorts of zany puzzles and explore this world. This game that will sometimes tell you to insert disc, I don't know, what was it, 58, because you found a labyrinth underground. I think they took that out in one of the versions because people kept asking where can I find the extra disc. And to become a pirate, you had to complete certain tasks like retrieving an idol that will eventually get you almost around in one of the best puzzles ever. And another sign that the game is a game. It works on video game logic where you kind of have to realize that you're carrying the thing in your pants, in your magic pants, so why not just pick it up, put it back in your pants and get out of the water? I mean, you've been holding things in your pants that were just impossibly heavy. You should not be able to move with all those things in your pants because this is a game. Don't overthink it. Just enjoy it. And you did absolutely get to enjoy this story with these characters because they have something that a lot of adventure games lack in the last couple of years. It was kind of a dark age. Uh, not sure if we're still in it. I haven't really played a lot of it. Well, there haven't been a lot of adventure games coming out apart from the Telltale ones, which I really don't count because they're they're not this anymore. They're, they haven't been this in a while. Uh, Monkey Island had, had wit in the writing, in the humor. It had wit, cleverness, actual damned cleverness. It wasn't just poo jokes or referential humor that quickly become so grating that oh my god if I hear another referential joke in a game I swear I am going to complain about it on the internet not to say that there wasn't the odd reference in Monkey Island again there's the George Lucas one for example but the way they do it that's the difference you can be smart about it or just say something about Chuck Norris with no context in the game's world still looking at you Seville still looking at you and through the course of the game you would learn from these characters different things like how to become a true swordsman which doesn't really require you necessarily knowing how to wield a sword all that well but it does require you to really like insulting people in creative ways. The insult sword fighting component is masterfully done. You go around the island collecting insults and replies to those insults, essentially beating them into submission by giving them the intellectual version of a yo mama joke. But when you get to actually fight the final boss, you realize, oh, nothing that I actually know fits with what Clara's saying, or does it? Yes, it's a game where you can try everything at infinitum, but if you actually pay attention, if you actually understand language, humor, then that fight becomes perfect. It's a dialogue battle. It's a puzzle that requires you to read, process the words, and figure out which of them would make the best comeback possible, the best insult. That's the kind of puzzle you don't really see much in video games, honestly. Uh, the last one that I saw that had something similar was Grey Matter, made by Jane Jensen, who also made uh, the uh, Gabriel Knight series. And that was about 10 years ago. Now instead you get uh, adventure games that have, um, at best, hidden object games in them as gameplay. They have, uh, you know, the puzzle type puzzles that are Sudoku or the Tower of Hanoi or uh, the kind of crap I used to put in, in my contest, my ARG contest that I used to organize about once a year and didn't really put much effort into. What I'm saying is puzzle design really went downhill and I blame Mist for it to be honest. That and the moon logic of the, uh, the King's Quest games and the rise of Facebook games and horribly, horribly thought out puzzles for tablet games. Even Broken Sword made that mistake. 
Broken Sword already had some uh, components where they were a bit, you know, mini gameish puzzle puzzles, not, you know, interesting puzzles, but the remastered version just ruined it. So back to Monkey Island. Something else that set it apart was the way the story unfolded. You were technically the main character, but you weren't really the hero. The hero, the, you know, the competent person that actually did a lot of things was Elaine Marley, the governor of this island and a bunch of other islands. She had a plan, she had a way of getting rid of LeChuck, the ghost pirate, the fiendish evil pirate that haunted the seas and vowed to one day marry Elaine. Well, um, turns out that even if you weren't there, she would have pretty much done away with him. She had things covered. While you mostly bungle your way through and almost ruin everything. But you're not really totally incompetent. I mean, you do start out as a bright-eyed novice, but eventually you do become experienced in the art of piratry, of sword fighting, of defeating ghosts with uh, root beer, I believe it was. Whole ending with the two lovers, one of which for 99% of the game never had the actual courage to talk to the other one. Getting together and confessing under the moonlit stars at night that you should never pay more than 20 bucks for a video game. Words to live by even now. There is very little you can do to the secret of Monkey Island to improve it. Well, you could simplify the interface and add better graphics and voice acting, which, yeah, that's kind of what I did with the remastered version, but there's nothing you can change to make it better. In terms of gameplay, in terms of design, in terms of story, in terms of characters, in terms of writing, in terms of mood, setting, music, well, you can improve the music a bit, but there is nothing you can do to it, nothing you can change, nothing you can remove, nothing you can add that will make it fundamentally better than it already is. Then you know what that means, right? It means it's perfect. It is a perfect game. It embodies exactly what it was meant to embody and it does it flawlessly. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's not overly long. It's not overly dramatic. It's, it's not grating. It's, it's just right. But if you did want more of it, oh, oh, you could get so much more of it in the coming years. And we'll talk about all of them over the course of this month. Because Monkey Island is a series worth talking about, no matter how many others have done it. Like literally last week, even though I've been planning this since January. And I put it here because this isn't the anniversary of Monkey Island. It was launched in October and I knew that there wouldn't be anybody else. There he was. But on the other hand, I don't know, maybe a work out in terms of recommendations i mean how many other people could be doing monkey island videos at this oh they are well i'm gonna make one each week for a month so there if you want to play monkey island you can find the game everywhere the secret of monkey island has been re-released in the um, remastered version that still lets you play with the original music and the original graphics it even lets you use voices for the old style game and that is a masterful work of art honestly the way they did the integration there is just superb so whichever version you play go for it you will not be disappointed there is absolutely no reason for you to be well half heard comments that uh, now it's, it's not worth it i'll not bring up that incident for it will only sully the joy that monkey island is meant to bring to the world see you again soon goodbye